Looking for a password manager? NordPass safely stores all your passwords and helps you generate new ones. The autofill feature saves you time when logging in and synchronizes across all your devices. Visit nordpass.com forward slash legendvd to get the best offer or use code legendvd at checkout to get an additional month for free. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Stompy deck, which is a creature aggro deck, topping off its curve with Collected Company, of course, alongside the Great Henge, which we can play as early as turn 4 in this deck, thanks to the many 5 powered creatures like Steel Leaf Champion, a 5 4 that's hard to block. We have Kazandu Mammoth, which can turn into a 5 5 thanks to Landfall, can also be played as a land, which is why we have a slightly lower land count. We've got Aronas as a 5 5 Death Touch Indestructible but can only attack or block if we have another large creature in play, and then a Lovestruck Beast, which gives us a 1-mana play with Heart's Desire, and then a 5-5 five five to potentially beat down and potentially enable the Great Henge as well, which is going to be our main card draw engine to take over the late game. Then we're also capable of some explosive starts, mainly thanks to Lenor Elves giving us a mana boost and Pelt Collector, which can grow over time as we play larger and larger creatures, so this is perfect in a mono green deck. At 2 mana we've got Pack Leader, which can also provide card advantage with pack tactics, and then Scavenging Ooze gives us a late game tool to gain a bit of life against the aggressive decks, and can also grow and give us a bit of graveyard hate, which is very useful against a Grease Fang combo decks of the format. And then we also have a bit of interaction with two copies of Blizzard Brawl to complement the four copies of Primal Might, which is a powerful fight spell that can also be used as kind of a burn spell to pump up one of our creatures and potentially deal additional damage in the process. And then Collected Company, which has a pretty good hit rate in this deck, including two copies of Old Growth Troll, which is not a 5-powered creature for Henge, which is why we're not going with a full playset, but still quite powerful as it will leave behind an enchantment that can make an additional 4-4 if the troll dies. And the mana base includes a few utility lands like Lair of the Hydra, which can turn into a creature, and Hashap Oasis, which can pump one of our creatures, and then Boseju to deal with artifacts or enchantments, but we do still want a lot of snow-covered forests to enable Blizzard Brawl, which can then make our creature indestructible and give it one additional power. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Turn 1... Adventure, Pack Leader, Beast on 3. And I think it's still worth it to a lair, even though we might need the extra snow land for Blizzard Brawl. Facing turn on planes, maybe points towards a life gain deck. And yep, turn to Valkyrie, so the Angel life gain deck confirmed. Play Pack Leader, and then next turn it could be better to Pelt Collector plus Pack Leader as opposed to Beast, we'll see. with an Overseer, so not the scariest start, but they're likely to have a Collected Company next turn. So, what's the play? I'm kind of liking Pelt Collector plus Pack Leader, to be honest, to start enabling Pack Tactics and grow the Pelt Collector. So, I guess we'll attack first. Opponent unlikely to block our 1-1. And then next turn we can maybe Brawl plus play 3-drop, although we'll draw from Pack Leader as well. Right, just a Bishop, so no company here. And a Youthful Valkyrie to gain 4. And Valkyrie stays back. We picked up a company, which is quite nice. So I can use a Beast to fight Valkyrie, so we can still enable some attacks. I think that's the play. Even though Valkyrie isn't the biggest individual threat, so we could maybe save Blizzard Brawl to take out, let's say, a Resplendent Angel. But I kind of want to enable Pack Tactics here to keep the cards flowing. So I think this is still the play. And then I'll attack with everyone except the 1-1. Might see a double block from the Spirit and Overseer. Or Overseer and Valkyrie, I guess, also makes sense. And we picked up Great Henge, so that'll help us keep the cards flowing, find more cheap interaction, which is a key to the matchup. We have to take out some of the key angels, like Resplendent Angel and the three mana Valkyrie. All right, that works. Kill both. Okay, 
He could have double blocked bishop plus overseer to not lose the spirit. And there's a resplendent angel, although they only gain four here. Not quite enough to make an angel token end of turn. So that makes a big difference. So we can play Henge, and then I can still play Mammoth. Probably beats playing Company for now. Although maybe I want to attack first and see what we draw off pack tactics. And then I maybe keep Henge in hand. They're unlikely to trade for Lovestruck Beast. Sure. And we might draw, let's say, a Blizzard Brawl, which discounts Henge by one, or a Primal Might. So, we'll see how they block. That makes sense. We can activate Pack Leader as well now to pump it up and then take out either Valkyrie or Bishop. Although, probably I'm just better off killing Resplendent Angel here, to be honest. And then we kill the Spirits, and that's fine. And then I still get to play Henge. Now do we Henge first? Primal Might for x equals 0 is enough. So it doesn't really help me discount Henge. But I guess it's kind of free to do so anyway. So kill Resplendent Angel. Play a 2-mana Henge. And that's going to be it for now. Opponent does not attack. Gain 2 end of turn. And more removal is great to see. Okay. So let's maybe start with a collected company, see what we hit. Double elves, so not the best, but still draws two with Great Henge, and that's enough to prompt a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't have any one mana plays, but hopefully Steel Leaf into a Great Henge will make up for it. And uh, Belt Collector is perfect. Up against green white, presumably angel life gain. Could be humans as well. Alright, humans confirmed. And a pack leader. Let's play ooze, and then we can hang back to double block, which is fine by me. If they play, let's say, an aspirant to put a counter on it, then I'll probably take four. What we don't want to see is something like a Brutal Cathar in the future, exiling our 3-drop so we wouldn't be able to henge in time. It's our opponent deciding which creature they want to kill. Goes for Scavenging Ooze. Early game Pelt Collector will be better, late game the Ooze will prevail. Opponent missing a third land, so we could easily see Brutal Cathar come down next turn if they hit our land drop. But for now we want to play a 5-powered creature to set up Henge, so it's between Steel Leaf or Beast. And I think we still play the champion here, so we can maybe use the adventure later. And I'll hang back. If we can get Henge down, we can easily take over. We can grow Pelt Collector to be bigger than Pack Leader. Just gotta dodge removal here. Alright, Aspirin's fine. And I'll take four if they attack. And now it's time for Henge. And uh, can adventure afterwards. And now do we want to trade? I think so. Can leave Pelt Collector back to block Aspirant, even if it gets a counter. And get the cards flowing. Bono trades. Works for me. Don't expect too much removal out of the human stack for a great henge. But could see Brutal Cathar now. And then we might just be one fight spell away from running over the opponents. It's gonna be another pack leader for now. And seems like they have another play available, goes for initiate. 
I guess it can eventually blow up our Great Henge. So if we find removal, that might be the target. There we go. Can start by maybe playing the troll. And then Love Struck Beast grows Spelt Collector as well. And yeah, I should probably fight here. Could also take out Aspirant or Pack Leader. And that will mitigate the Initiate's abilities here as well. I guess we'll attack with Pelt Collector first. Gordon takes it. And uh, yeah, I mean, killing the pack leader is probably the straightforward play. Remove the most power and toughness and the plus one counter. And it's going to be very tricky for them to take out Henge now without losing their entire board. Okay, maybe animate our lair next turn after playing elves, see if we find anything else useful. Thalia's not really a threat. And a bodyguard. So now opponent is unable to cast Collected Company, which they could easily have in hand. And we have a little bit more mana to work with. Alright, step one, I think, elves. Pack leader. And then I could activate Hashup Oasis, or we could animate Lair. Animating Lair would be for three, so that's probably good enough here. And then wait until next turn to use Hashup Oasis. Keep it a surprise. And everyone but 1-1 uh, one, one attack. Opponent can put the bodyguard to use, chum block with it, and the creature that becomes indestructible. So that does soak up essentially two non-trampling attackers, but two of them do have trample. So that could have been a reason to still go for Oasis instead of Lair, but I don't think we would have had lethal regardless. So our opponent soaks up a bit of damage, but I don't really see how they come back without being able to cast company. Which was probably their best way to come back if they hit, like, double Brutal Cathar. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, maybe coming to the same conclusion. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is promising with turn 1 Elves. So I'll give it a shot. And then turn 2 could already play Lovestruck Beasts. Although we might be better off going for the adventure and the pack leader in case they uh, kill the 1-1 one -one and Beast is unable to attack. Thoughtseize, I'm sure, takes one of our creatures here. So that'll dictate how we play out our following turn. Alright, I guess we can play a troll now. Not sure yet which flavor of black our opponent's playing. Could be black, red, mid-range. Could be mono black. Black, red confirmed. Okay, got a lot of removal, so just waiting for the opponent to present some threats. And a Trespasser will force us to discard. So I could just play a Ronas and offer the trade. We still get to draw off Pack Leader. The thing that could happen is our opponent accepts a trade and then has removal for troll and then Ronos doesn't do much by itself. So it's possible that we're better off just casting Primal Might here to keep attacking. And then X equals 1. And I'll discard another Primal Might. And now they might not play around a third. We also want to hit our land drops with pack tactics. Opponent's down to five. So one more primal might might be good enough. No pun intended. Another trespasser is not going to be good enough here. 
back up to six. And a final Primal Might. And I think we even get to level up here. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn one adventure, get on the board. Into pack leader, probably gonna steel leaf before beast. Up against the black white, so it could be a grease fang reanimator deck. Although Thoughtseize points towards a more mid rangey deck instead. Probably takes pack leader to throw off our curve. And they succeeded. So lots of powerful 3-drops, but missing that 2-mana play is going to make a bigger difference. Uh-huh, Esper Control. Well, still probably in favor of Steel Leaf. If they have a counter spell, which is somewhat likely given that they shocked themselves, Troll is probably better to keep around for later, as at least it leaves something behind after a Sweeper. Just a faithful mending, so it might still be a Grease Fang deck. And yeah, there's Parhelion and Sky Sovereign in the graveyard, so if they have turn 3 Grease Fang, there's not much we can do about it. Yep, that's the perfect start. We have Boseju to hit their vehicle. Gotta hope to maybe hit a Scavenging Ooze of Company, but we're gonna be too far behind already with the two Angels being generated, so... Yeah, sometimes you just face a turn 3 Parhelion, and that's just going to be how things work out. So, yeah, I think we're just dead. No way for me to draw cards and find removal for the Angel token. We can see what we would have hit of company, see if there's maybe a Scavenging Ooze. There is not. Alright, GG's. Opponent can attack us in the air, and that will be game over. They can bring back Sky Sovereign to kill a creature on the way out, or discard Parhelion once again. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential, although we do need to hit two more land drops ideally. But on the draw, I guess we can give it a shot. Pelt Collector, if we don't have anything else going on, we can adventure Lobstruck Beast. Facing Grixis. Maybe Reanimator or Control. Thoughtseize can have a look. Might have to take Great Henge, which we're currently unable to cast anyway, so that's no big deal. They could take our Beast, which is the only play for next turn. Although we have plenty more creatures to enable Henge afterwards. And takes a Steel Leaf instead. Do we see another Thought Seize? We don't. So probably just a Fatal Push for Pelt Collector. Which happens... Alright, so we have our third land at least. And we could play Ronas first if we are afraid of removal to ensure it stays around for Henge. A Wandering Mind, don't see that one very often. But could be nice in a more controlling shell. Can maybe find another Thoughtseize, yep, to take away Henge before we can cast it. So before Thoughtseize got revealed, I would be leaning towards Ronas. Now, I could see the argument for Lobster Beast. Although, I guess Ronas can still attack if we play Beast next turn. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, play Ronas then. Don't really want to attack with a 1-1, one -one, as it's needed for Beast. And we can also pump it up later with a Ronas. So Thoughtseize takes Henge. And then hopefully we'll draw a Collected Company or another Henge soon. 
Okay. So... Yeah, we'll play Beast. If they have another Fatal Push, things get a little awkward as they can trump Ronas, take out Beast. Do we want a Primal Might? I don't think we do. Let's just hit for 5. I guess the upside of Primal Might is we would be able to attack with our Human Token. Maybe that's worth it. Alright, fine. And hope there's no Fatal Push. There's not. Opponent does fall to 8 already. They took a little bit of damage off their Shocklands and Thoughtseize. Let's see if they have a Sweeper. Has to be a pretty specific one. Opponent passes. So we could Primal Might for a 3 to pump our Human Token so it still enables Ronas if they were to kill Lovestruck Beast. Although I guess on the flip side, if we pump our Human, the Beast no longer gets to attack. And if we only pump for 2, it's not enough for Ronas. So maybe I'm just better off playing an extra 1-1 one -one creature for Lovestruck Beast and Lenor Elves. And then we can still pump with Ronas were they to take out Lovestruck Beast. Alright, I guess that was good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. Could use a 2-drop to follow up a Pelt Collector, but we can play a second on turn 2, and then Steel Leaf into Company. Can provide a lot of damage. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Planes. Maybe a life gain deck. Yep, a Johnny's welcome. Alright, picked up a pack leader, which is great. So we've got a perfect curve out start. I'll take some removal of the top, which we'll need to keep up with some of the life gain creatures. And then a great henge could also be quite useful. But for now, play Steel Leaf. Could have considered playing a tapped Mammoth, just so we guarantee company next turn, but I think playing Steel Leaf is still better. And there's a Blizzard Brawl. So we've got the front foot. The life gain deck isn't really known for its interaction. They just need to hit a big company and gain a ton of life, but opponent's already too far behind after a perfect start from the green deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand, good mix of ramp, interaction, threats, and then company and as a nice curve topper. Third land is welcome, facing planes. Is this Angels? Hushbringer, okay, that one we don't care about too much. Could be an Aura deck. I think we still go for Champion here as opposed to we could go Pack Leader plus Primal Might. But we're likely to still be able to kill Hushbringer next turn, even if they slap a few auras on it. It's gonna be an Aspirant. That's fine. So I can Pack Leader and then Primal Might. Could even Primal Might twice. Could also Primal Might twice next turn and Company for now. Although, developing Pack Leader is pretty decent, and there's always a chance we miss on Company. So we'll try this approach. And then... Yeah, we can... X equals zero... Hushbringer. And then I should probably just be mana efficient here with Elves. Spellbinder can take company, not the end of the world. Scavenging Ooze still a nice follow-up, but we can attack first, probably with the entire team. This we could pump, put in probably trades, and then we'll play Scavenging Ooze and exile a few creatures. Opponent just takes it instead. Now do I want a Blizzard Brawl Spellbinder? I don't think that's necessary. Can just pass with Ooze available. Aspirants. Where does the counter go? Spellbinder. That's gonna have to stay back to maybe block Steel Leaf. 
Our opponent does have two mana up, so they could have some instant speed removal in response to Blizzard Brawl, like maybe a Fateful Absence. For now, the Ooze can snack on some creatures. And Ooze does get better the more effects like Blizzard Brawl or Dank is playing. Right, opponent uses Fateful Absence now. They might have been better off waiting in case we made a mistake with our fight spell, but can go for it now. And then kill Spellbinder, have three Snowlands. Guess we can pump the Elf as well if we'd like. So that can attack past Aspirant without trading. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand does have two lands once we consider Mammoth, so it's not too bad. And we can get started with an Elves. And then next turn... Can maybe go for Ooze or develop Pelt Collector first. Opponent has their own Elves. Alright, so... Could Primal Might for X equals 1 to take out their Elves. Think I'm better off keeping it for later. And then now... Yeah, I guess Scavenging Ooze is the more efficient play, even though we might miss out on some plus 1 counters. Opponent's got their own Pelt Collector. And Scavenging Ooze, so very fair fight. Cannot quite company. But we can Pelt Collector and then fight the opponent's Ooze. Before it gets too large and then... Our Ooze will reign supreme over the graveyards. So I don't really want to trade. Opponent passes with company, I'm sure. We can do the same. So not gonna attack. And with double company and Henge in hand, we should have the late game covered, but opponent could be in the same boat. Pelt Collector plus Steel Leaf, not a bad hit. Hope they don't have Henge. Just a pack leader, that's acceptable. And a troll, so opponent's almost empty handed, but they are pretty far ahead on board. So we need a good company, otherwise we could be in trouble. Opponent may not know about Lovestruck Beast in our deck, which is a reason not to attack with Pelt Collector. Opponent keeps him back anyways. Might as well company now, and we did indeed hit a Lovestruck Beast, so would have been nice to ambush Pelt Collector, but our opponent's respecting that possibility. So don't really want to trade away Beast since we need it for Henge. So we'll take five. And we can Henge and then still activate Ooze. That seems fine. Although we will take a significant hit from the opponents, potentially. Well, I guess Beast still discourages some attacks, although if they have removal as their last card, we're gonna take a lot of damage. I guess then we could pump Ooze twice up to a 4-4. And the Pelt Collectors would grow, so maybe it's not a disaster. So we'll pass for now. And yeah, if we can survive this next turn, we should be in good shape. Opponent moves to combats and goes for an all-out attack. So, happy to block Pelt Collector, and then we could double block Pack Leader, and if they pump it, that's fine by me. And then Ooze can grow. And then we're still taking... I guess quite a bit, but Ooze can also gain some life. This seems fine. Opponent does pump with Pack Leader. That's acceptable. So we'll wait for damage, or do we? I guess we're taking 8, 13, plus 1, trample 14, so yeah, we can wait. So that was their big turn, and yeah, they got us to one. But we'll see if we can uh, take over now with our hinge. It's 
smack on their graveyard. Back up to five, thanks to the extra life from Henge as well. And how do we feel about a main phase company? See what else we hit. That seems fine. Not bad. Pack leader and Ronas to discourage any further attacks. And uh, maybe go for pack leader, keep up ooze. Opponent knows that her writing's on the wall, as our hand is gonna completely take over in a matter of a few turns. Alright, so yeah, close mirror match here against Mono Green. So as we could see, this green aggro deck can certainly hold its own in this Explorer metagame. There will be some weak matchups if you're facing a combo deck and they manage to have the perfect draw like we saw against Grease Fang, they can certainly get you. But even in that matchup, we do have cards like Scavenging Ooze, which can potentially come in handy. So if they don't have the absolute perfect draw, the Ooze can maybe interfere as well. So certainly has game against most decks in the meta. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.